thanks and thanks to all of you for this rich and informative discussion. Before we conclude, I'd like to get your final thoughts um, from each of you and maybe I'll ask you the question about what you're most excited about uh, in therapeutics for CLL today um, in June of 2020. Uh, maybe we'll start with Dr. Burke uh, to give uh, Dr. Allen a chance to catch his breath. Yeah, I would say, you know, a couple of things strike me as particularly exciting. I mean, one is, uh, is the, the novel BTK inhibitors, the non-covalent uh, uh, BTK inhibitors that we just heard about from Dr. Allen. Uh, you know, I think those offer a lot of promise. I mean, the, the biggest challenge right now in the field is these really tough to treat patients who who progressed through, uh, you know, the BTK inhibitor and venetoplex and maybe a PI3 kinase inhibitor. So those are the really desperate patients that need help. And so something like this really offers offers potential for those folks. You know, and I think the other big exciting thing is is really uh, sort of a, a broad, you know, using MRD to adjust therapy uh, to me is really exciting, not just in CLL, but in a lot of fields. You know, we you know, think of, thinking about lymphomas where we have these treatments that you know, work for a good majority of patients, but then there are these folks whose cancers get resistant and then they, they relapse and do poorly. You know, if we can identify who those are and see that coming by using MRD assays to see who really has residual disease, then we can tailor therapies earlier and try to try to make an impact sooner when we know it can has the potential to help more. So I think, um, um, you know, in CLL, tailoring therapy based on uh, uh, MRD assays and results is an exciting, you know, way forward for the field. Dr. Allen, what are you most excited about? Yeah, I think I'm excited about these combinations of therapies. We're seeing really great clinical synergy. We're really seeing a, the vast majority of patients, irregardless of high-risk features, be able to achieve MRD negativity, which we know does translate to to longer-term remissions. And I think um, I'm, I'm excited about that. I also uh, kind of echo Dr. Burke a little bit in, in trying to get behind just our thoughts of what is personalizing the, the treatments for the patients, but really start to dive into the data and find uh, cytogenetic abnormalities that may respond better to a certain approach. Uh, we have a little bit of evidence that maybe that there, there may be something there uh, with BTK inhibitors or 11Q or, or whatever it is, and, and really start to tease out certain patient populations that might actually do better with a specific approach. And so um, it's not going to be just a, a discussion and what does the patient want, which is kind of what we do now and tailor it about that, but really uh, evidence-based uh, guiding of, hey, this is going to be the best treatment for you. And I do think with maturation of all this data and larger numbers of patients being treated in uniform manners and similar populations, we'll be able to start to tease that out in kind of meta-analyses type, type uh, 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 studies. And so uh, I'm excited to, to see research into to those areas as well. Great. Dr. Shadman? Yeah, so in addition to what, what we just mentioned, that the combination therapies and using MRD to guide our approach, I think uh, the other thing that I'm I'm excited about is the fact that no matter how do we define high-risk disease, there are patients who are still in need of a different type of uh, treatment and novel treatment approaches, and it's good to see that immunotherapy specifically is still active for CLO, and we do definitely have patients who need uh, treatment beyond what we just discussed today. And also, uh, I mean, maybe being hopeful more than uh, excited is that with more options, I certainly hope that that translates to make these drugs more affordable and available for more patients uh, uh, and around the world because you know hopefully uh, this will create some competition that eventually patients will benefit from. We shouldn't forget that uh, you know these drugs are not necessarily available for all CLO patients in, in different countries and I think hopefully with more more agents and uh, there will be uh, a situation where we can, we can help other patients have access to them too. Again, thank you all. Um, and to our viewing audience, we hope you found this Onc Live peer exchange discussion to be useful and informative. Thank you. <laughs>